How's it going, guys? It's Brad C. at the WWE SummerSlam 2018 review. We got a lot to talk about, so... You know, I want to get all my anger out at the end. But you know what? We'll just go with each show match as it goes along. So let's get started. Pre-show matches. First off, we have Andrade C... We had the mixed tag match. Andrade C. and Oma, San Selena Vega versus Rusev and Lana. Pre-show match. Won't talk much, because who really gives a crap? So we'll cut right to the match ending. Um, Andrade distracts Lana, which would allow Selena Vega to roll up Lana and put her and Selena would put her feet on the ropes, on the middle rope for leverage to get the three count for the win. So Andrade and Selena get a win. Of course, Andrade is supposed to be getting a big push here. So yeah, so yeah, that's that match. Next pre-show match we had was for the cruiserweight title. Cedric Alexander defends against Drew Gulak. It was back and forth. Not going to go much detail because it's a pre-show match. Match ending. Drew Gulak rolls up Cedric Alexander, but Cedric would counter by rolling up Gulak. And Cedric gets the three count for the win to retain the Cruiserweight title. The division's supposed to be good, yet they're still on the pre-show. I guess, you know, maybe you could say, you know, Triple H is taking baby steps on 205 Live. But honestly, if you want to prove that the Cruiserweight t Division's getting better, get them a main card. Give them a main card match. Not a damn pre-show. And our final pre-show match is for the Raw Tag Team Titles. Plus, putting a title match in the pre-show just devalues the title. which shows that it's not interesting. See, anyway, Raw Tag Team Title Match. The bandwagon team, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel, defend against Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder from the Revival. And, of course, the bandwagon team did their little B-team, B-team, go, go, go chant to get that fucking cheap pop from the crowd. Back and forth match. Match ending. Ref gets distracted from Bo and Dash trying to interfere. Scott would have a three count rolled up, but the ref couldn't want to count it. Couldn't count it because he was distracted. Um, Dash would whip Bo off the ropes. And then Bo falls right on Scott, which will allow Curtis Axel to counter the roll up with a roll up of his own. And Curtis Axel gets the three count for the win, so the B team, the bandwagon team, retains the Raw Tag Team titles. But yeah, that's the pre-show, so for all of you, thanks for playing. Now let's get to the main matches that matter. The main card. Opening match of the night, we have the Intercontinental title on the line. Dolph Ziggler with Drew McIntyre in his quarter defense against Seth Rollins with the returning Dean Ambrose in his corner. So in one month, Dolphin Dean, go, Dolphin Seth go from main eventing Extreme Rules to opening SummerSlam. I wonder if that's karma for the crowd counting down during that Iron Man match at Extreme Rules. Uh, who cares? They'll put on a great match anyway. Anyway, to the match itself. Highlights of the match. Seth's hip toss was good. Dolph's neck breaker was good. Seth's jawbreaker was also good. Dolph's toss over the top rope was good. Um, Seth's crossbody counter to a suplex over the top rope was good to the outside. Seth's swing blade and blockbuster were good. Seth's suicide dive and springboard clothesline were good. Seth's ripcord need was on point. Dolph's DDT on the apron was good, well executed. Seth's super kick was good. Um, Dolph's fog splash counter was good. Um. Um, Seth's inverted superplex and sidewalk slam are well executed. Well done from both men. Match ending, Drew would throw Dean into the steps. Dolph would hit the zigzag, but it would only get a two count. Seth's buckle bomb was good. So yeah, to the real match ending, Dean hits the dirty deeds on Drew on the outside. Seth hits the super kick on Dolph, followed by the blackout. Seth gets the three count for the win, and Seth is now your new... Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, a lot of questions about this. Will Dean turn heel on Seth? Is this the end of for Dolph Ziggler? Does this mean his contract is up or is, did Dolph resign? A lot of questions. I'm going to steal a line from Brandon Hodge. Shout out, shout out to him. And I'm going to, you know what? We're going to have to wait and see. So yeah, anyway, continuing on. Next matchup we got is for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. The Bludgeon Brothers, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan defend against the New Day. Xavier Woods and Big E. Kofi will be on the outside. Highlights of the match. This was really meh. 
Highlights. Rowan's spinning sidekick was good. Harper's Gator Rowan drop kick were good. Rowan's splash body slam combo was good. Rowan's backbreaker was also good. Harper's senton was good. Um, Rowan's power slam on Big E was good. With, um, Rowan's power slam with um body slam with um yeah. Will Harper on the Big E on the outside was good. Well executed from all three. Woods Hurricane Ron into the stouts was good. Big E's overhead belly to belly outside the outside the rain were good. Both of them. Big E's normal belly to belly followed by the splash combo was good. Well executed. Harper's sit out slam was good. Harper's super kick was good. Xavier Woods front wheel dive was good. On um, Big E's spear through the middle rope was good. Rowan's crossbody on the apron was good. All right, some more. Um, now Bludgeon Brothers crucifix is good. Harper's sit out power bomb was also good. Big E's big ending outside the rain was good. Uh, Big E's rock bottom slam on the apron was also good. Xavier Woods elbow drop outside the rain was well executed. Match ending as New Day's about to go for the midnight hour. Rowan would strike Xavier Woods with one of bludgeon hammers, forcing the DQ. So the Bludgeon Brothers were going to retain regardless. And after the match, the Bludgeon Brothers would attack Big E for post match assault. They also attack Kofi Kingston. Bludgeon Brothers stand tall. All right. Next up, one on one match. Mr. Monster in the Bank, Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens. If Braun loses in any way, Owens becomes Mr. Money in the Bank. I was not looking forward to this. I was hoping they don't, WWE doesn't make a mistake. So this match, highlights of the match. Strowman splashes in the corner. Both splash in the corner to start the match were good. Strowman's drive-by tackle was, tw he did twice was good. Owen's super kick was good, but Strowman did not follow his feet. Um, Tr Strowman's choke slam on the ramp was good. Match ending, Strowman hits the running power slam to get the three count for the win. Strowman wins in less than three minutes. Whoa, 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 wait, what the fuck? Wait. So you're telling me WWE actually protected the integrity of Money in the Bank? Fuck? Are we sure we're living in the right reality? Or are we living in some alternate universe? You know what? All you, all you fans can cry wolf about Owens all you want. WWE did the right decision by making sure Strowman holds on to money in the bank. Alright? You gotta understand, at the end of the day, you gotta protect the integrity of the briefcase and the pay-per-view, money in the bank. You gotta protect it. You gotta make it feel prestigious. By having Strowman drop a briefcase, it doesn't look that prestigious anymore. Because it's then like, then what was the point of Strowman winning the match if he was just gonna drop the briefcase? Like, it's dumb. Dumb is dumb. But yes, thank you, Strowman holds the briefcase. So anyway, continuing on. Next up is the triple threat match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Carmella defends against Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. This match was meh. But anyway, highlights in the match. Becky's leg elbow drop combo was good. Becky's hip toss was good. Charlotte's leg sweep was good. Becky's two hip tosses were also good after that. Carmella's running clothesline and drop kick were good too. Charlotte's big boot was good too. Charlotte's back spoder, both of them were good. Charlotte's back suplex. Becky's drop kick from the top rope to both Charlotte and Carmella was on point, well executed from almost three women. Becky's back spoder was good. Charlotte's spear to Carmella, followed by Carmella's face buster to Becky was good, well executed from all three. Charlotte's Boston Crab slam from the middle rope was good. Becky's leg drop from the top to break up the figure eight was good. Carmella's suicide eye was actually good. So yeah. Charlotte's spinning moonsault outside in the ring was good. Almost looked like the goddamn red arrow. Oh yeah, by the way, Char Carmella was actually wearing a gear setup, I guess, and they had the colors of the Hart family. I guess you could say a tribute to Jim the Anvil Nightheart since he passed away. I think it was two week or two ago. I think it was a week ago because yeah, I was supposed to think it was around a week ago. 
But yeah, of course, got some respect for Carmelo, of course. Thank you for honoring Jim Neanderthal and I, Hardy. You actually just show someone actually has respect for the legends that paved the way for this business. Continuing on, Becky's Urinagi was good. Carmella's super kick was good too. But the count would get broken up in two. Becky's back spoiler was good. While Becky had the disarmor locked in on Carmella, Charlotte would hit the natural selection on Becky. Charlotte would then get the three count on Becky Lynch for the win. And Charlotte Flair is your new SmackDown Women's Champion. And Carmella was not even involved in the decision. But hold on, we ain't done yet. So after the match, Becky and Charlotte would, tell, would hug it out twice. Of course, Becky's showing sportsmanship. And then, Becky Lynch attacks Charlotte for post-match assault. And that means Becky Lynch heel turn officially confirmed. So then Becky would continue to attack Charlotte. The mat, the brawl would go outside the ring. Becky would throw Charlotte into the barricade and then over the German announce table. Well, let's be honest. This heel turn for Becky Lynch was, was the good thing. Becky's character was stale as shit and she was going nowhere. So I guess, you know, time to change it up. And maybe, maybe she'll now go somewhere. Maybe get her another title run. We will have to wait and see on that one. So anyway... Next up, we have a matchup. One-on-one match. WWE Championship. AJ Styles defends against Samoa Joe. Wait, 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 wait. What the fuck? Why the fuck is this match a mid-card match? Why is one of your marquee matches fucking for the, in the goddamn mid-card? Fence, you arrogant fucking idiot. But yeah, also for this match, AJ's wife Wendy and AJ's daughter were at, were at ringside, the fourth row. Non-camera side. But yeah, it's in the match. Highlights in the match. I look forward to this match. This match is actually pretty good, but the ending, we will talk about. So AJ's head toss was good. Joe's shoulder tackle was good. AJ's drop kick was good. Styles sliding strike was good. Along with his bottom rope drop kick was also good. Joe's leg sweeps, his suplex slam, and his suicide dive was good. Suicide... Suicide dive was also was really impressive for a guy his size. He actually almost tri almost tripped on the goddamn rope. It could would have been a bad botch. Goddamn. But Joe got lucky there. Continuing on, Joe's clothesline was good. Style springboard clothesline outside the ring was good. Style insecurity was good throughout the match. AJ Styles was trying to hit trying to get the Styles clash in, but couldn't lift Joe up. And also, AJ selling the uh, tweak knee was good. Like, AJ knows how to tell a story in a match. AJ's one of the best storytellers in the match. Um, Styles diving clothesline in the corner was good. Styles moonsault into a reverse DDT was good. Um, Joe's rock bomb slam was good. Joe's diving leg drop was good. Joe's atomic drop was also good. Along, along with a senton combo. Um, Styles Fireman's carry neckbreaker is always impressive and good. Joe's power slam was good. AJ Styles would hit the Styles Clash, but it only get a two count. Styles would then hit the payway kick. And then Joe's Joe step up in Seguri in the corner was good. AJ would lock in the calf crusher on Samoa Joe, but Samoa Joe would break it up by getting to the rope. Then Samoa Joe would walk in the coquina clutch on AJ. AJ would get to the rope to force a break. So then we go. So then, we, then the match goes to the outside. Samoa Joe throws AJ into a barricade. Sorry about that. So then Samoa Joe grabs a microphone and then Samoa Joe tells Wendy that he made a promise that AJ Styles is coming home. And then Samoa Joe then says, guess AJ's not, but I could be your new daddy. And then AJ, who bladed himself to cut himself open, would then jump over the German table and attack Joe. And making the dive onto Joe right to the timekeeper's area, knocking the timekeeper's barricade down. Then AJ Styles would attack the timekeeper personnel. Then AJ would grab a chair and strike Samoa Joe in the back with it, forcing the DQ. It was a great match, but that was a shitty ending. So AJ Styles is going to retain regardless. After the match, AJ attacks Joe with the chair again for post-match assault. 
After a couple strikes, AJ would then leave Joe. AJ would go to his wife and daughter in the crowd. And then they'd leave the arena together. So yeah, really good feud start. Really good build, build up to it so far. But yeah, great match. Shitty and disappointing ending. Yeah, so far, really other than the uh, Sagor and Rollins match, it's looking pretty bad, man at the point. So next up, we get a segment. I'm like, do we really have time for this in a four and a hour show? We get an Elias segment. Elias is on the stage for his concert. Elias then goes on, of course, saying that WWE stands for Lock with Elias, of course. Elias then talks about his album. Elias then says more people love him every day. And Elias says he's going to debut his new single. But first, but before that, Elias then calls the Brooklyn crowd a bunch of filthy New Yorkers. Well, if you said that to the Philadelphia fans, they would agree. Because we all know how much Philadelphia hates New York. But yeah, continuing on, that's a rant for another day. That's irrelevant to this segment, but still, I'll bring, I'd bring that one up. Anyway, continuing on, Elias would then try to play his guitar, and then the guitar breaks. And then the crowd would go and chant, you fucked up. And, and then Elias just walks away, throws his guitar at the ribbons on the stage, and walks away. See, so yeah, next up, we get a one-on-one -on -one match. We get the match we've been waiting eight years for. Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. Of course, um, Miz's wife, Maurice, is at ringside with Miz's daughter, Monroe Sky. So this match, highlights of the match. Uh, Miz is running dropkick in the corner to start the match is good. Bryan's running bulldog was also good. Miz's springboard clothesline from the second rope was okay. Miz's neckbreaker combo was good. Like, Miz ain't the best in-ring worker. Best in-ring wrestler in the world. But his mic and promo skills make up for it. Bryant's running clothesline was good. Bryant's running drop kicks and, and both running drop kicks in the corner were good. Bryant's toss over the rope and then drop kick it in the bot through the bottom rope were good. Well executed. Danny Bryant's diving clothesline from the top outside out inside the ring was good. Bryant's baseball slide was good. Daniel Bryant's avalanche belly to belly superplex is also good. Um, Bryant's yes kicks were good. Well executed. Miz's DDT was on point. Miz's it kicks were well executed. Brian's dragon square leg sweep was also good. Miz's slingshot was also good. Uh, Miz would hit the skull crushing finale well executed. We would only get a two count. Daniel Bryan's roundhouse kick was on point. Miz's figure four leg walk was good. Daniel Bryan's reversal was also good on it. Brian would walk in the yes lock, but Miz would fight to the middle rope. Um, Dan Bryant's running knee off the rain apron was good. Followed by Daniel Bryan's running drop kick in the barricade. But before that drop kick, Miz would be near Maurice. Maurice would hand Miz something from her bra. So then when they Bryan puts Miz Daniel puts Miz back in the ring, Miz would then strike Daniel Bryan with a left hand, with a left with a left punch. Miz would then. Hand, hand whatever Maurice gave Maurice gave him back to Maurice. Maurice would put it down her bra. Then Miz would get that was that move was to also intercept the suicide dive on point. Um it would um, from the photos and the video, it looked like that Maurice handed Miz brass knuckles. That'll explain why Daniel got knocked out. So Miz gets back in the rain. Miz gets the three count for the win. So yeah. But yeah, it was a good match. I'll say it was a good match. But yeah, how about that? So yeah. But still, Miz, you're not the top heel in the company. I would say Tommaso Ciampa is. And for anyone that wants to argue, riddle me this. How many times has the crowd chanted, fuck you, Miz? Zero. I've heard you suck chants to Miz, but I've never heard a you fuck you, Miz chant. Unless it happened at a house show. If it happened at a house show, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. But Tommaso Ciampa is the top heel. Because when you can get the crowd to chant fuck you to you, you're doing your job as a heel right. Because mainly Miz is getting cheers. So 
then again, you know, a lot of people respect Miz for being the top heel. But yeah. But yeah, anyway, that's where I stay on that. That was a discussion for another day, but Miz is victorious over Daniel Bryan. Next up, we get a one-on-one -on -one match. Constable Baron Corbin versus Finn Bauer. Bit Corbin comes out, gets no reaction. Before, as Baron's wait for Finn Bauer, lights would go out. And then the Demon King music plays. And then the red lights going off. I'm like, oh shit, is this the Demon King? And then the Demon Finn Bauer shit comes out. I mean, that that paint Finn Bauer had on was fucking great. Grade A paint. Fucking awesome. Fucking badass. So, highlights in the match. This was a quick match. Finn Bauer's running drop kick in the corner to start the match was good. Bauer's front foot dive was good. Bauer's two swing blades were good. Bauer's step up in Seguri was good. Bauer's top rope stomp to the back was good. Match ending. Bauer hits the coup de gras on Baron Corbin. Bauer gets the three count for the win. Match is over in like, what, one, a minute or two? Like, Demon Finn Bauer just squashed Baron Corbin. I'm like, what the fuck? Huh? Holy shit, they really made Demon Finn Bauer look strong. God damn. Yeah, it's crazy. They make Demon Finn Bauer look strong, but they make normal Finn Bauer look almost weak as shit. Like, god damn. But then again, no, their Demon Finn Bauer is a special gimmick, so they're gonna make it look strong. But anyway, continuing on. Next up, we get a one-on-one -on -one match. United States Championship match. Shinsuke Nakamura defends against Jeff Hardy. So yeah, highlights in the match. Shinsuke's knees were good. Jeff Stunner was good. Shinsuke's spinning kick on the apron was good, along with his diving knee on the apron. Jeff's swing blade was good. Um, Jeff's inverted atomic drop, leg drop combo was good. Shinsuke's spinning left kick was good. Jeff's whisper in the wind was on point. Shinsuke's knee in the corner was well executed. Jeff's drop kick were good. Jeff's twist of fate swanton bomb combo was good. But Shinsuke would break the count at two. Shinsuke actually almost missed the goddamn rope. Um, Jeff's stunner was good. Um, Nakamura's heads up to avoid a swanton on the apron was good. Well heads up wrestling. But for Jeff, ah oh, damn, that fucking looked, that looked like it fucking hurt. Uh, match ending, Shinsuke would hit the hammer kick, and then Shinsuke would follow it up with the Kinsasha. Shinsuke gets the three count for the win to retain the United States Championship. So Shinsuke gets out of the ring. After the match, Randy Orton's music hits. Randy Orton comes out. Randy walks to the ring. Once he gets to the apron, Randy then walks away from the ring and goes backstage. So in other words, you made Randy look like a fucking idiot doing that. It's like, if you're going to walk to the ring, then get in and attack Jeff. What the fuck are you hiding from? Like, come on. be a, Actually be a fucking heel for a change. God damn it. Anyway, moving on. Next up, one of another marquee matchups. Matchup for the Raw Women's Championship. Alexa Bliss defense against Ronda Rousey. Highlights in a match. This was a quick one. A squash match. Ronda spinning Samoa drop was good. Ronda flipping Bliss over the top rope was good. Um, Ron, um, Bliss would throw a couple punches and knees at Ronda. But Ronda was unfazed. Ronda had the death look. And at that point, the crowd was chanting, you fucked up. Ronda's two judo throws were good. Ronda's spinning white noise was good. So yeah, Ronda really has some good in-ring moves. Match ending, Ronda walks in the arm bar. After doing some damage to the arm, Ronda, Ronda makes Alexa tap out for the win, for the submission win. And Ronda Rousey is your new Raw Women's Champion. She also makes history. Well, Women's Division made history tonight. Because Charlotte Flair tied Trish Stratus for most women championship reigns all time. With seven. So yeah, Trish Stratus, make room on the mountaintop. There's another seven-time women's champion. And you have Ronda Rousey become the first women in any in all professional sports to win a UFC women's title and a WWE women's title. Probably the only one to do it unless Holly Holmes or Misha Tate or, hell, even Amanda Nunn decide to jump ship. But probably not. 
But anyway, continuing on. But yeah, great night for um, women's wrestling. Really big step in the women's evolution. And also speaking of WWE Evolution, the women's pay-per-view in October. It was also announced that Alexa Bliss will be going one-on-one -on -one with Trish Stratus. I can't wait for that match. That's going to be good. I cannot wait for it. But of course, all good things must come to an end. The reason why I put the word rage in this review video. Universal title match. Brock Lesnar defense against Roman Reigns. So boring fuckface comes out, gets booed out of building. So yes, once again, the meme continues. Congratulations, Vince. You still can't get Roman over with the crowd. This is what happens when you put New York Giants and Philadelphia Fe Eagle fans in this crowd at the same building. At the same time, when they all have a common enemy not named the Dallas Cowboys. So yeah, of course, Roman does the same old boring fucking entrance. Looks like he just woke up from a goddamn power nap. Roman Reign, in my world, my entrance was cool. Shut the fuck up. Brock Lesnar comes out, gets almost no reaction. During Reign introductions... Brock, um, Paul Heyman would put a big emphasis on defending. He would say it five times. He'd be like, defending, 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 defending. Like, wow, what, what, are those, what are those few extra defendings for? Is each defending for every 50 days Brock Lesnar never defended the Universal title? Probably. Wouldn't, wouldn't be surprised. Now, right before the bell would ring, Braun Strowman's music hits. Mr. Monster in the bank, Braun Strowman comes out with the briefcase. Braun comes out with the microphone, and then Braun says that he refuses to be a coward and cash in when someone's back is turned. And then Braun says if he's going to do anything, he's going to do it face to face. And then Braun says that he is the monster among men. Yes, you are. And then Braun wished both men luck. And then Braun says that he, he plans to cash in on the winner. And whoever, whoever wins the match is going to get these hands. So Braun was going to look from outside the ring. So while Brock was looking at Braun, the ref would, at, would then go f call for the bell to be rung to start the match. So the ref was showing obvious favoritism to Roman Reigns. Well, Vince probably told him to. Yeah, ring the bell while Brock's back is turned. Make Rome favor Roman or you're fired. Yeah. So anyway, to the match. Highlights and Roman fails in the match. Um, Reigns three stupid man punches to start the match were fucking terrible. Each one it looked fucking oversold as shit. Um, Reigns three spears, three spears were crap. Um, one was meh. One was terrible. Third one was really shit. Like either Roman couldn't hit Brock down on the way. Or Brock reacted too goddamn early from it. The third one, though, Brock Lesnar would lock in a guillotine, which looked good, well pointed. Um, Roman would fight out of it. The second one, Roman would be lock. He, Brock would lock him in again. I swear to God, Roman fucking looked like he was taking a goddamn nap in that guillotine. That's not how you fucking sell a fucking headlock submission, you dumbass. Rain Spinebuster was fucking terrible. Um, Lesnar's three German suplexes are good. Um, Reigns was going for the spear on Strowman. Um, I'm not Strowman. Um, Lesnar. Lesnar was sidestepping and would turn to a suicide dive through the middle rope to Braun Strowman. So, and it was like, man, who, who cares? Roman almost botched it by tripping over the rope. So, yeah. You know, it's Roman. Um, near match ending. This is interesting. Then Lesnar gets out of the ring, and then Lesnar F5s Braun Strowman. I'm like, oh my fucking god, you're doing it, Vince. You are going full McMahon again. Again. In your main event of your biggest pay-per-view since SummerSlam. You are going full McMahon. Because what Brock would do is then Brock would then attack Braun with the Money in the Bank briefcase... And then Brock would throw the briefcase all, all the way to the stage, hitting the, almost hitting the goddamn Titantron. Then Brock would grab a steel chair and hit Braun in the back five times with it. It's like, yep, Vince McMahon, you've gone full McMahon. You've learned nothing. 
So then Brock gets back in the ring with the chair. Roman hits the spear, which looked terrible again. Roman gets the three count for the win. This match was not even ten minutes long. Terrible ass main event. Boring fuckface is now your new Universal Champion. So, and Braun does not cash in. Like, what a shitty match. Like, Braun didn't cash in. Paul Heyman didn't betray Brock Lesnar. And Roman Reigns is still a goddamn babyface. And, of course, as soon as the match ended, there was that fucking terrible cheap pop from the crowd. Um, I'll tell you what that pop is about. It's one of two things. It's either A... The fan wagon, fair weather fans in the crowd lowering their standards to this piece of shit. Or B, the crowd just cheering and just being glad that the match is over so they can go home. But as soon as the cheering ended, then the booze came. It's like, good grats, Roman. You did a good job, Roman haters. You waited for the bandwagon fans to get their moment of fame. And then you got yours. But yes, Roman is champion. Undeserved champion. Roman Roman got the shovel and got to bury Brock Lesnar tonight. So Brock will be going back to UFC. He can now focus on his fight with DC. I guess if you want one positive out of his situation, at least Brock Lesnar, at least the champion's back, title got taken off a of part-timer, so we have a full-timer's champion. I just hope they get that belt off Brock Roman Reigns as soon as possible. Like, seriously. Like, seriously, Roman, you had three fucking chances. Mania 31, Mania 34, Greatest Royal Rumble. You pissed all three away. Now, all of a sudden, now everyone's like, now that Roman got done the fourth time, we're now supposed to just sit here and pretend that the three failures Roman had, we forget about. Sorry, folks, that's not how the real world works. We have this thing. We have this fucking thing called a memory. A lot of us paid for those shitty ass main events Roman fucked up in. Like this fucking predictability bullshit is why this fucking company is going to be out of business within the next 10 years guaranteed tops. Like seriously. This fucking company is predictable. The amount of fucking unpredictability is about as diluted as my fucking piss. Like, we fucking saw Roman winning this match from a goddamn mile away. We were all fucking putting... We were all calling Strowman cashing in. Because it was the only way we, the fans, win this match. Like, seriously. Like, it's official. There's no hope for WWE. Fence does not give a shit about the fan base. Or being the top company in the world. Like, get this, a lot of us fans, we're not content with mediocrity. We're not. Especially when you overhype and over-exaggerate this company and this sport to be this great spectacle that happens every week. And you come nowhere close to it. And you end up being anything and everything from it. And people are giving this shit a free pass Oh, it was a great pay-per-view. Roman deserved it. Grab some motherfucking standards, you bandwagon fairweather pussies. Fuck's sakes. SummerSlam was fucking trash again. Only good matches were fucking Dan Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins. That's a match of the night. Joe and Styles was good, but that ending was disappointing. I guess, you know, Dan Bryan Miz was also a good match. But still... Disappointing, trash-ass fucking pay-per-view. The quest for a good pay-per-view still continues. Because once again, roses are red, violets are blue, Vince McMahon went full McMahon again. Congratulations, WWE. You're fucked. Again. Again. Like, fucking Monday Night Raw is a fucking joke. Because now, fucking boring fuck face that. Because once again, Vince shoved Roman Reigns down our throat again. It's all about what Vince wants, not us. It's all about what Vince wants. And what the soccer moms want. And what the fucking nerds want. How the fuck do people give this shit a free pass? 
have some goddamn standards. Like, it's official. WWE is not for grown men. And if you think the ratings are bad, wait till in a week or two after SummerSlam. And we'll see how low those ratings go now. Because I guarantee you, a lot of fans that were in there, there were a lot of USC fans that were interested in Brock Lesnar's reign. And now that Brock dropped the belt, they're all going to fuck off. I think the only thing that'll keep him there is possibly Ronda Rousey. Like, really, Ronda and Braun Strowman and AJ Styles are the only three things going from. Also, you once again made Braun Strowman look like a fucking idiot. Because once again, had Braun Strowman say he was going to cash in money in the bank. And once again, you made Braun look like an idiot and not do it. Like, seriously. Why not have... Well, that was something. We want Braun champion. You even said that you were going to wait till a big four pay-per-view to put the belt on Braun Strowman. Like, what is this? Is this Shinsuke Nakamura all over again? Or are we going to find any excuse possible to not put the belt on Strowman? Again. This bullshit again. Like, this company does not learn anything. Like, they've suffered a fate worse than death. Mediocrity. This company will not just be mediocre. They're fucking marinating in that shit. Like, if you want real comp want to watch real wrestling companies, go watch New Japan, Reign of Honor, or even Impact. Those three are way fucking better than this shit fest. If you want to watch anything WWE, watch SmackDown or NXT. Overall, this week weekend, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn was the way better show. My final SummerSlam rating, 3 out of 10. Fuck Roman Reigns. I hope that he gets that fucking belt taken off him soon. That's about the best thing we could do now. Wait. Fuck Roman Reigns. Does it fucking deserve it? I don't care what anyone says. It's my fucking opinion. Everybody's entitled to one. But yeah. I'm done with this rant. Fuck this company. Fuck Roman Reigns. Fuck this pay-per-view. Maybe Vince McMahon can fucking let me down in my funeral. Maybe Vince McMahon is officially the fucking problem. It ain't the negative fans. It's Vince and his fucking yes men. Like Road Dog and whatnot. They're the fucking problem with this company. The only thing we can hope is Vince McMahon pulls a Brian France and gets arrested for DUI and drug possession. But that will probably never happen. Because what are the odds of that ever happening? But anyway, yeah, you would never, you never know. But anyway, continuing on. Done. I'm done with this shit. But remember how I said, and for anyone that watched NXT Takeover over this shit, you made the right call. And remember how I said you could thank me later for that? Well, guess what? It's later, and you're welcome. But yeah, like I said, I'm dead serious. Watch SmackDown or NXT. Reign of Honor, T Impact, or even New Japan over this shit. You can thank me later. But yeah, I'm out. Fuck this show. Fuck Roman Reigns. Get that fucking belt off him. ASA fucking P. Well, next pay-per-view is not till September, which is Hell in a Cell. Yes, I did go. I'm not go. I did go to Hell in a Cell last year. It was in Detroit. No, I'm not going this year because it's in San Antonio. And we're gonna find out in a couple days. When number Slam 2019 will be coming out. Like the two rumored cities are supposed to be Los Angeles or Toronto. I'm hoping it's Toronto so I can go to it. I would probably go to NXT TakeOver Toronto too also for it. But yeah. I'm done with this pay-per-view. Fuck this. Hope everyone has a great day. But hey. Maybe Vince McMahon and the WWE can let me down at my funeral. Like they have the last 10 plus goddamn years. Oh, was it too soon for that? I don't give a fuck. Peace out.